For the other youthful activists out there who may be listening to mm -hmm. this, can you describe being in the larger councils with this agenda that you have and how you get through the inertia or the disinterest or the bureaucrat? How do you keep pushing that policy through those different layers? Well, it, it's a funny thing because one of the, the hard things is when you're in that position of, of um, being aware, the worst is when you feel like you're the only one, when you're the only one in the room, and then whenever, it's, say, it's an Asian topic, all heads turn to you, or if you're the only black person in the room and everybody turns to you, that's really stressful because no one person has all the answers. So the first thing is to build what, whatever organization or, uh, that you're working with is to build a network outside of that um, so that you're not the only one, so that you can test your, um, your, your, um, test your information against, against others as well and say, is, is this the best way? So in your case, it's building allies within the... The larger movement, yeah. The Asian Canadian movement or the Korean Canadian movement? The culturally movement? diverse movement because it's all diverse. the same. It's all this, it's always been the same issues. Like I, I sat on the, this, I sat on a, lo a lot of different committees and advisories, but uh, I think probably one of the, one of the bigger ones was um, the second advisory to the Canada Council on Racial Equality in the Arts. I sat on that committee for three years. It was the only cross-disciplinary standing committee at Canada Council at the time. And Canada Council, um, I think the years, I can't remember what years it was, it was in the 90s, but um, Canada Council at the time was, the, the, there were so many, there were so many good theatre groups and artists of colour who simply were not able to penetrate uh, federal funding and, and people couldn't quite figure out why. Our committee was basically tasked to figure out why well, actually, our committee was tasked to, to, to come up with recommendations. The previous committee had basically um, recommended the change in the definition of what is professional because a lot of artists of color were simply being dismissed because their professional, professional accreditation wasn't adequate for Canada Council. They, you know, um, they hadn't graduated from a, a, a professional theater school. Um, or they practiced uh, some some dance or some music form that wasn't wasn't understood. Um, they rehearsed in a non-conventional way. Um, any number of things. So that committee uh, that committee made a big impact just with that changing the the definition of professional, so that it still recognized that uh, being a professional artist is is having a practice. And um, uh, but not one. It, it basically meant that Canada Council couldn't just simply uh, eliminate people off right off the get go, which is what was happening. But when and that, was, sorry, and that's and that's different than being proactive, right? Is that meaning so we'll get rid of the little barriers so the applications just get. You know, well, at least can be considered. At least would be considered. Considered by, the, uh, by a jury of artists, right? And that's a, that is different than a council saying, we actually have to be proactive here because there's an imbalance going on. 